Hi everyone, this is Sunil here. Hope you're all doing great. So in this session, we are going to talk about user exits. So this is the first video in the series about user exits. So in this uh, first session about user exits, we are going to talk about the theoretical part. And in the next sessions, I'm going to tell you how you can exactly configure a user exit. Okay, so let's start. So here we go. I'll open and uh, okay. So you guys, uh, I think you already know. Uh, I mean, no one is that much interested in going through a PPT slide. I know about that, but uh, I'll not. I'll also not do the same thing. What I'll do is I will directly jump into something. So <clears throat> see, when I'm starting the user access, I already assume that you know. Informatic MDM. I mean, you do have some idea on informatic MDM. What is a uh, match process? What's a merge process? What's a staging? What's a load? And all those things. So definitely, you need to have idea on that in order to understand user exits. If not, you check out my earlier videos. Okay. Uh, okay, guys. So I'm going to go through a list of topics. Okay, from one to nine, I'm going to go through all the topics here, and all these topics are certainly those topics. Um, where user exits becomes mandatory. I mean, you need to implement a user exit. Otherwise, you have to do it in a very hard way. Most of the things you cannot implement without user exits, and most of the things uh, you might be able to do. But let's start. So let's talk about this. Uh, first thing is perform standardization on the landing table for a certain group of data. Okay. So what is the requirement here? The requirement here is perform standardization. You need to perform standardization for a certain group of data. It means that let's say uh, from the source you're getting 10,000 records. Now you need to do a special standardization for let's say 100 records uh, every day or every time you need to do that. So maybe that is one use case or maybe on all the data you want to do some standardization on the landing table, right? So this is one requirement. So I'll be going through these requirements. Meanwhile, you try to understand, you, you try to uh, do a brainstorm how can you achieve this without using the concept of user exit? Normally, how do you tackle it? Okay. Then the second thing, detect the delta count and log it in an audit table or archive table every day. Right. So the requirement here is you need to detect the delta count. It means let's say today you got a full file with 20,000 customers. So what you need to do is you need to uh, create a you need to create an audit table. Uh, in that audit table, you need to log in how many records, delta records are being processed every day. For example, you had 1 million records in the full file, but only, uh, let's say, uh, 4,000 records have changed. So only 4,000 records will be qualified for the delta, right? So you need to identify those records. You need to, uh, if you want to store them in some uh, backup table, also you can do that. That is another requirement. And if you want to log it in an audit table, that is this requirement what we are talking about and you want to archive it every day and this all this process that I'm talking about here must be automatic it means that I will I'm going to run the staging job then I'm going to stop the thing here do something else then again start the load job I'm not talking about those kind of automated process I'm talking about complete uh, I mean, I'm not talking about manual process, but I was talking about automated process, right? So this is one requirement. And then the third requirement is if the count of the delta exceeds 10K records per day, then either fail the job or do some special action or send an email to the uh, business analyst or the developer or the architect or send an alert email, any kind of customization you want to do on the delta. That is, uh, depending on the total number of delta processed and all that, you want to do some customization then here we go. This is the requirement for that. And the fourth one is, uh, this is very important. I want to archive the rejected customers. So uh, you might be aware in my earlier sessions, I talked about the reject functionality, the manual reject. So you could reject records in Informatica MDM. Now if you do that, let's say the postcode of a certain customer is invalid. Now that customer could actually be a Fortune 500 customer. I mean a company, Fortune 500 company then you're calling trouble if that customer is rejected because there will be serious escalations why that customer is not present in your MDM. So you have to answer that, right? So in order to do that, you must follow up with the source team every day. So what you need to do is you need to archive these rejected customers. Why? Because basically the reject table that you have in Informatica MDM is a truncated load table. It's truncated every time, every time you load it and then load it. 
So you need a mechanism to uh, archive these records based on the date and all that and later the production support guys can always follow up with the source team regarding this, right? So this is one requirement and this is I have given an archive and you want to do any customization on that, you want to change something, anything, I mean anything, you just want to do anything on the rejected records, you could do that, right? That's what I'm talking about here. And the sixth requirement says that put records on hold for a certain group of data. I mean you have, uh, let's say 10,000 records coming in and loaded into the base object, now that's fine. But the client says that load the records in the base object, that's not a problem, but do not match and merge them. Why? Because they are, uh, they want to confirm something until unless they don't confirm it, you are not supposed to take any action. Action means match and merge, right? So if that's the requirement, how are you going to achieve it without user exit? Just think of it. Now, finally, I'll talk. I'll tell you how can, you can do it using the concept of user access, right? Then match the record for a group of data, right? Archive the result, uh, but don't merge them. Right? The requirement here is that you need to match the record, right? You need to perform the matching, you need to archive it, that is store it somewhere, log it somewhere, that information, but you don't need to merge them. But rather accept them as unique. Remember this, try to understand this. You need to accept this record as unique records, you don't need to merge them, right? This is a different use case and this is different use case. You could get requirements like this, these are very common business scenarios, right? But if you get, a, get something like this, how are you going to tackle it? Okay, let's try to understand. And coming to the 8 point, perform some customization before doing the merge. You want to do some customization before doing the merge. Now what am I talking about? What kind of customization can we do? You want to send that information to, you want to store that information uh, in some logging table that you are going to start the merge operation or uh, you want to take the backup of uh, some your base object records or the cross reference records or pretty much anything that you want. I mean any type of customization that you want to do before the match process then you would have to do it in the post match, right? And there's something called as the ninth point, log the merge records in log file. I mean this requirement I'm going to give you a practical requirement. Uh, the requirement that you see here that is uh, uh, once the merging is done, you need to send, you need to log it uh, in an audit file or a log file and uh, the second requirement could be send an email to the data steward because the data steward might be a busy person, he does not have that much time to check his mailbox every day, that is uh, how many records are, uh, I mean he cannot log in every day into IDD to check the possible duplicates and all that. So you need to send an email with all the merged records and all the issues after the merge is done. So this is another requirement. Now another, any other custom requirement, uh, a requirement that I recently faced is uh, something like, uh, uh, let's say uh, you have 10, uh, from, a customer is coming from 10 different source systems, right? Now you merge the customers, that's fine. But you have a particular column, let's say a uh, DD date, something like a DD date, okay? And what a client wants is, you need to uh, merge them, that is fine. And after the merge is done, you need to take the least uh, DD date and you need to update that in your base object. That could be another requirement, right? So that requirement also you could, uh, uh, I could put it here, right? So in all of these use cases, uh, just try to think, I think you would have done some brainstorming. So I don't know what you have done, what you have thought, but just try to understand that if I want to automate this process, I mean I have a lot of ways of doing this manually, right? Uh, for example, first thing what I can do here is I can uh, go to the landing table. Once the data is loaded into my landing table, I can go and I can do this, perform this activity and then manually run my jobs, my staging jobs, my load jobs and all that. But that's manual activity. I don't want that, right? So what, I, what do I want? I need something automatic. So if you go through all of these requirements, you will see that uh, you need a concept of an automated program that could run and that could uh, execute, that should have the ability to execute almost anything and that's what actually user exit is. User exit is basically a program, okay, it's just a program uh, that runs at a specific point of time. Now what do I mean when I say specific point of time? 
When I say specific point of time, it could be after data has been loaded into the landing table, before the data is loaded into the staging table, that's the pre-staging, and after data has been loaded into the uh, staging table, that's the post-staging, and then you have something called as the post-load. After data has been loaded into the base objects, then you have match, merge, and many different things. For the theoretical part, you can check it here. These are all the user exits that you can have post landing, pre-stage, post-stage, post-load, okay, all the different user exits. Now, you might have a question that uh, what's the difference between a post landing and the pre-stage user exit? Pretty much the same. The only thing is that in a pre-stage user exit, you already have the delta table with you. So, you can play around the delta table. Here, uh, sorry, here you don't have the delta table. You just have the PRL table, the landing table, and the staging table. And what's the difference between pre-stage and post-stage? I mean, that's like... Uh, before data has been loaded into the staging table, that's the pre-stage. So here the delta detection is done, right? Here also it is done, definitely. But here the data has been loaded into the staging table as well as the reject table as well as the raw tables. So here you have access to the raw table, reject table and the staging table, which is not the case here, right? And when I'm talking about a post-load user exit, what's the difference between post-stage and post load user exit pretty much this is completely different than this this is something that is uh, that comes into picture once data has been loaded into the staging table but here uh, the data has just been loaded into the base object right not into the I mean this is something different right so similarly you have a pre-match post-match post-merge post-unmerge po pre-unmerge post-unmerge now when to use what when are you going to use which thing right so that depends upon the business requirement suddenly a client uh, uh, he calls you your uh, business analyst or your architects and tells you that you I have a requirement and I want you to do something something like uh, I want you to uh, put the records on the hold so you need to implement this particular user exit that is post load user exit uh, what if I uh, for example say what do I need to do here put records on hold for certain group of data so what am I going to do here uh, what am I going to do is up Update table that is uh, update your the table name is uh, c underscore party let's say uh, set consolidation underscore ind is equal to nine where right um, where your row row id underscore object okay in uh, select row id this is the list of uh, my certain group of data when i mention right so i'm mentioning this certain group of data using this query from a temporary table t underscore uh, custom or you can name it something right so you need to load all the this certain group of data you need to load it here and then you are going to just fire this query after the load has been done into the base object Okay, so that's the concept of user exit and for more you can check this theoretical concepts like uh, it's just a Java code and all that. So, but I'll tell you the concept here and there are two things. Basically, if, I talk, if I'm talking about version 961, then I'm talking about before 961, it was basically packages, database packages, but uh, after 9.6.1, these are like... Um, uh, it's in Java, right? So it's in Java before and I have created a separate video where I've explained how to what are these packages, how to implement this in the packages and a separate video on how to implement this in Java. So both I have created. You check, out, check, check that out. Here I'm just covering the theoretical part in this uh, first video and this is like the sample code for it uh, and this one is in Java. Uh, I'm going to talk about it later. And yeah, these are pretty much the same use cases that I talked about. So if someone is asking in an interview or something, can you explain me what are the use cases where you have used uh, user exits? Pretty much you can just take anything out of here and explain him. So that will uh, that will be actually enough, right? And I think the that's the conclusion of this session because uh, I'm done with the theoretical part. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to implement it in the packages and in Java and we'll try to implement a few. I'll show you practically how you can implement. Thanks guys. Thank you very much for your patience and uh, check out the other videos. Thanks.